Thank you, Michael, for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to have you. Thank you so series. much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, look, I would love to start. Um, you are an expert in leadership. And I personally would love to hear your perspective on what constitutes effective leadership during a global crisis as now. And if you could just tell us a few examples that you find noteworthy or important to point out. Okay, um, when I talk about leadership, I usually go to the core of, of the subject, of, of the matter itself. And I try to put leadership in perspective. So for me, leadership is a process for something that is much deeper. And that deeper thing is actually life. So, so, so the way I look at it is that, you know, we're here, we're alive, and by default, we seem to have a common purpose. I mean, all living organisms, especially human being or including human being, and that is to survive and to grow at different aspects of our, you know, at the different dimensions of our being, whether it is biological, emotional, you know, intellectual, social, spiritual, I mean, you name it. So, so the core idea is how do we maintain, um, how do we create um, a, a rich and prosperous and hopeful and resilient journey and experience of living. So what really matters is to create a, a beautiful and thriving experience of living. Hmm? That, that's, 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 that's the core. So leadership comes in the context of making sure that this happens. Now, in life, sometimes things are moving slowly and beautifully. Things are, you know, cruise control. Everything is great. And sometimes even everything is exceptionally well. And sometimes things, you know, you get turbulences and storms. And maybe sometimes you're in the eye of the storm. And sometimes maybe you get tsunamis. So that's the nature of reality itself because that's the reality of nature you know so that so th th that's how it is so for me leadership is about mobilizing people whether they are individuals or organizations or you know systems you know communities countries even the global community so that this community or this these people and this organization um, is successful in dealing with its challenges of survival and of growth or is successful in creating opportunities for prosperity and abundance and well-being and growth. So the idea is, you know, the key words are mobilizing, but so mobilization and people, because it's end, in the end it's about people, whether they are, you know, in an organization or in a family or in a community. And there is a journey towards a purpose. And for me, leadership is a value-based um, activity. It's not a technical uh, activity of mobilization so there has to be this value about making life in the end better if life is suffering so how we can reduce the suffering and make it more bearable and if life is good then how can we make it even better so there's the purpose element is very important so that includes a situation where we live in a crisis conditions and that's also part of reality I mean uh, sometimes things are unpredictable and sometimes often things are unpredictable, especially when we're talking about complex systems like the world that we have created that is complicated and complex beyond comprehension. I mean, uh, you're, you're a psychiatrist and you're an expert in this field and you know that it would take many lifetimes just to start even begin having a grasp of what a single human being is all about, you know, with all the multiple facets and the dimensions and the personalities. And, you know, it goes, the roots go almost endlessly deep, right? So we're talking, this is one individual. So imagine two individuals, right? And how exponentially complicated it takes because it, be, it happens because then we become, you know, multiple layers communicating at multiple layers and dimensions. And then you can imagine the complexity of that. And that's evident, evident usually in the nature of complex relationships that people and couples have with each other. So multiply that by eight, by eight billion almost. And then you can see and add to that the complexity of identities and history and fears and aspirations. I mean, this is like un unimaginable complexity.
So that by default creates crisis because how can you control something that has you know billions and trillions and trillions of parameters and variables? So leadership, when, when this happened, the purpose of leadership is, is how to make sure that this crisis, which is a sudden change in reality, and the way we're defining it is a sudden unwarranted or undesirable change of reality, how can we manage the situation, how we can navigate people through mobilizing them so that they can come out of this crisis? to whatever we can call you know the previous normal although you know as a psychiatrist you know that when you talk about the previous it's never the previous normal again because because something happened and we are not the same there's a layer of experience and pain and emotions and comprehension and awareness happened at you know different uh, different depths so so how we go back to as safely and as gently and as smoothly as possible to continue our journey of survival and growth. So if our survival was at stake, right, because of the crisis of leadership, or sorry, of the crisis that happened, then the challenge is how do we go back to ensure that our survival is not at stake anymore, right? That we're fine. If our growth uh, journey was at stake, something happened to mess up our plans for growth and prosperity and abundance, then the leadership challenge is how do we fix that crisis and go back to the same you know uplifting trajectory of of growth so leadership for me is always contextual and it's always about uh, looking at the reality diagnosing the reality uh, with with an open mind and with a, uh, with 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 courage that looks at the entire complexity as much as possible and then seeing how we take this reality and how we play with it and how we deal with it and navigate it so that we can create a relatively better reality. So, so that's how I define leadership. And what has happened recently is this major crisis that from the facade, it's a, it's, it's a health crisis. But as you know, things are not unidimensional. There's so many layers into this. I mean, it has endless layers, political, geopolitical, social values. I mean, you name it. You name it, because it's a manifestation of some kind of, you know, human behavior or at least the reaction of human people to what nature does. So endless complexity. So what we're having now is this crisis and what humanity now is involved in is how do we navigate ourselves out of this crisis so that at least we end up with minimum damage or the least possible damage. And if possibly, hopefully, you know, and maybe, you know, I'm hoping too much, maybe we can learn something from it, you know, and end up in a situation where we are okay and little wiser, little wiser. And that's part of the journey, that, that, that's part of the journey uh, of, of history itself. I mean, all history is, is like this. And it's not going to be the first crisis. There are going to be many of this. And now, as we get out of the health issue, we're going to go into the economy issue, and there are going to be the social implication, and there are going to be, I mean, you name it. You have, there's no limit to how much you can cascade what's really happening. I mean, this will, as a psychiatrist, you know that. I mean, this will, it's already starting to translate itself into relationships and marriages and suicides, and, 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 and it has no end. So in, in any context a person is, whether it's at home or in business or in society or in public sector, so the key is to look around you and ask yourself, what's my reality? And what's the nature of reality in this, in this particular context? And how can I do, what kind of interventions I can do so that I can mobilize people around me through this intervention, maybe in a way that would help them and me and all of us move one step further you know, into sanity or into what we call a state of equilibrium or just being sort of normal, living a normal life. And maybe, maybe we can turn it into an opportunity. So that's the context of leadership as I understand it in, in, uh, when we talk about the crisis that's happening now. Okay, and you know, just to build on that, one of the things that I've been thinking about and observing, you know, as I look at how different leaders from government or private sector or elsewhere are managing their communication through this time, you know, how do you speak to the truth of what's going on and make sure that you 
you know, speak to people's struggles, right? Because some people are disproportionately affected, others are not affected. But how do you do that? Speaking the truth, but also providing hope and managing, right? There's a tension there. Yes, yeah, sure. And yeah, I, I would love to hear your thoughts on that because a lot of this is about expression or the power of expression yes. and communication. And I, you know, you can just observe some people do it in a way that resonates with me, yes. and other others don't, right? So then, how do you teach leadership in terms of you know, the communication aspect? Yes. Well. Um, I'm a, I'm a great believer in the power of truth. For me, uh, if there is, um, if there is, you know, if there's something called universal law, at least when it comes to the subjective world, you know, to the way we act, the way we behave beyond the object, uh, the objective world, if we, if there is something that is called, you know, at the core of what is an absolute universal um, um, rule, that for me would be, you know, at least one of the few ones would be truth. So I see no substitute to that. And you can't exercise leadership if it's value-based leadership, i.e. it's value-based, uh, at least positive value, because there are also negative values. So, so in the sense that uh, it means well, it means, uh, it means it goes towards enhancing the human condition. If that's what the intention behind um, exercising leadership, then there's no substitute to truth, uh, because you can Otherwise, you'll be doing dealing with illusion. Otherwise, you will be dealing with a lie, especially if you're conscious that what you're what you're communicating is not the truth. And um, equally important, um, you're manipulating people. So, if we talk about leadership the way I understand it, which is about enhancing, mobilizing people so that you can enhance or, or collectively together the human condition, uh, there's no substitute for the truth. You have to say the truth. Now, what is truth? That's another complicated subject because you can go into you know endless conversation about that. So the, the, the simplest thing to start with is truth is about not lying. So don't twist the facts, right? At least don't lie about the facts. And so that's the beginning, because if you go into a conversation of what truth is and what absolute truth, this has no end. But the definite thing is that, okay, the sun is up now. There's a consensus that the sun is up. So don't lie and say the sun is not up, right? So, so, so start with the fact. And maybe if you want to take it a step further is, uh, if you are an experienced person when it comes to leadership, maybe check your interpretation of the truth with some people whom you trust in terms of common sense and in terms of advice. You know, is my interpretation of reality correct? Is this, is is the way that I am I, I am I defi I'm defining the truth of this reality? Is this accurate? So me, because we have all we all have biases and we have fears and we have you know our complicated personalities and characters as well and our old demons and the wishful thinking and and the, the whole complex layer of the way we view the world. So if you if you have a support structure of people whom you can go to and check if you if the way you're interpreting reality is accurate, then that's the starting point. Then you know at least you're standing on solid foundation. The next step is to communicate this in the most in in the wisest possible way, uh, because you can communicate the truth in a way that hurts, and you can communicate the truth in a way that's elegant, and in the way that it is um, it is considerate. To always to achieve the same objective. I mean, we have children, and you, we know that the way you communicate to a five-year-old is different than the way you communicate to a teen, teen, teenager, and is different to when you communicate to a 35-year-old. So it's the same truth, but you have to present it in a way that doesn't sacrifice um, it, its truthfulness, but it makes it more comprehensible um, f from, from the receiver point of view. So there's no substitute to truth. Now, I'm going to add another dangerous word to word to to the word truth. It's not a very popular word because it has been abused and you know overused, which is the word love. So, so if you mix the word love with truth, and you try, you keep in mind that you're communicating truth to the to, to the to, you know to the others, whether they are individuals or they are groups, with with love. You know, with good intention, you're doing it 
to build, to construct, not to destroy, then you're on the right way. Because um, truth without love sometimes could be unbearable, right? Sometimes it doesn't change reality itself, right? But it's out because sometimes reality is so hard that it becomes unbearable. So you have to always package or, you know, um, wrap truth with love without twisting its content and offer it because you're trying to construct and whatever you're doing it's either building or or destroying it's either helping or hurting right so you have to make your choices why am i communicating truth if it's to build then you have to do it in a way where the foundation is love so that you can construct and based on that then you start making you know at least a realistic and truthful um, connection with people and that will be the foundation for your interventions when you exercise leadership because you know in the end you're telling them listen my friends or my family or my colleagues or my you know countrymen this is our reality the way I'm seeing it right now if I'm wrong tell me but that's how I'm seeing it and we have we doesn't we don't seem to have any choice except to deal with this reality in the smartest possible way even if we're going to make some mistakes so that we can get out of this mess right so what can we do together so that we collectively work right in a, in a, in a way that's aligned uh, maybe not with the same vision but at least for the same purpose so that we can move from this uh, reality to a better one so the, the core of this communication uh, has to be truth but always has to be you know um, uh, love has to be there uh, Compassion also has to be there, but compassion also could be dangerous because uh, you have to use it wisely because you don't want to For the sake of compassion To sacrifice the truth, you know, you see what I'm saying be Because I think the best favor you do to people is is tell them the truth in the nicest way so even sometimes if it's bold, but you can't twist the truth or you know mess with it just because you want to be compassionate you're hurting the other people you know, you're hurting them. So there's the, the, exact. So you have to have wisdom in the in the all of this, so that so and and wisdom comes from experience and you know from mistakes and all of this. So if you if you're if you're riding that wave, if that if that's your orienting philosophy, then the way you can improvise and design interventions become more sensible. And with trial and error, especially when you're going into unknown territory, eventually you know you'll get it done uh, be, be, why am I why am I hopeful because and you mentioned hope with this because of the amount of our the potential for resilience now we're, we're not born resilient because we are born as you know fragile babies but we definitely have an imaginable amount of resilience at least I mean in the context of in human life if we work our, on, on ourselves well, if we build our character well, if we build our value system well. So hope is always there. Why is hope there? Because hope for me means if we do the right thing and we keep an open mind and we stay adaptive and flexible and learn from our mistakes, right? And keep, you know, not give up to despair and keep moving forward, eventually we will get there. It might not be easy, it might be messy because life is messy it might be sometimes painful but if we keep doing the right thing and keep an open mind to learning hope means i have faith that if you do the right thing eventually if it does not if the if the results are not guaranteed at least it's the best option because what's your other option what's your other strategy do the wrong thing that's 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 destructive right that's suicidal so you have no choice but to do the right thing so and be hopeful that you know maybe you have a higher chances of succeeding that if you do the right thing you know eventually you'll end up on the in on on the safety on the side of safety and 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 that's the nature of life is anything guaranteed no but you can't sacrifice truth you can't sacrifice love and you can't sacrifice doing the right thing and you can't sacrifice being adaptive after you've done all of this if it works enjoy if it doesn't work what do you do you have to accept it that's the nature of reality i mean that's how life is i think that's beautiful truth love and and look i guess the power of truth and love on 
on the people that are maybe materially impacted, right? That can go a long way in providing hope. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, through this interview series, what I'm trying to do is hear different perspectives such as yours so that we can share our stories, right? And a lot of people are coping, a lot of people have different needs, yes. um, different circumstances, right? And that's that's why I want to do this. Um, because as psychiatrists, right, we see the, vari- the variability across different groups, across different cultures. Um, and there isn't something for everyone, but I think there is the right way forward. And I'm so glad that you're speaking about truth and love because these are such basic principles, yes. but so important. Yes. Um, so I have a question for you, just Go. to shift gears a little bit. Go ahead. Um, you know, you've always said you have so much experience, and you know, you've worked for Reuters. You've seen different crises, right? You've yeah. reported on different crises. You've managed staff during crises. Um, probably have a very strong philosophical and spiritual view. I just wanted to know for you, either spiritually or existentially, if you look at what's going on now with um, SARS-CoV-2 and this pandemic. What is your view, you know, whether that's like a long-term prediction of where this may go, I mean, you spoke to it in the beginning, or just philosophically, like how do you view this as similar or different to other things you've seen? Definitely in terms of um, magnitude, scale at least, I mean, this is of historic proportions. I mean, when did you have in history, written or unwritten, told or untold, you know, billions of people in lockdown. Now, in terms of number of, of, of casualties, unfortunately, and that's a very painful part of this reality, is um, it's not unknown to history. I mean, remember several years ago when a major tsunami hit hit uh, Asia, 200, maybe 250,000 people died in, you know, five minutes. No, no, well, in few, in, in matters of minutes. So, so this scale of tragedy is not unknown. Um, is un, is not unknown in history, but it doesn't matter when you live in that uh, reality. It's still painful. I mean, you can talk about you know uh, tooth pain as much as you want, but when you you know when you have it yourself that becomes your reality and for you uh, that that's your drama that what you want is to just to remove this pain from your teeth right so so that so so in the context that uh, that that uh, this is a painful um, event in history of course it is and um, and as i said if you maintain a realistic view to the nature of life i like this phrase uh, the nature of life that's derived from uh, the nature of reality that's derived from the reality of nature. You see what I'm saying? So what's the reality of nature? The reality of nature, these things happen, you know? Uh, a baby deer is born and, and three minutes later it's eaten by a lion. It's uh, the reality of nature, you know? Um, um, you have, a, you know, a, lion cubs everywhere and then a lion attacks and it kills everybody right so that's the reality of nature we, we can't we can't negotiate that we can't argue with that that's how it is so the beginning has to be accepting this reality of nature and in some cases it's unfair in some cases it's you know it's shocking it's painful but if you put it you know in the cosmic level or at least on a universal level it's really fair because it's the same rules for everybody you see so so it's the same rule for everybody so in the sense of it's being it is unfair to everybody defi- dep- depending on how you call it you know how what how do you find fairness in that sense is you know the same rules are if you're here everybody you know is under gravity if you go to the f- to the jungle everybody is under the same kind of threat so, so if you accept that sense of reality, uh, and if you if you're peaceful with acceptance, if acceptance is, you know, is a friend of yours, if you've made friends with with the with the with the fact that life, uh, if you've made friends with the fact that life is full of uncertainty and ambiguity, right? Uh, so if you're if you have made friends with these aspects of of the nature of reality then it makes it 
it makes it more it makes it easier then what then then what's your responsibility your responsibility is that in that context in this context of reality is to remain as sane as possible as as functional as possible at least by doing your best to take responsibility for your own life because if you don't take responsibility for you becoming or remaining functional then indirectly whether you like it or not you've become a liability to other people especially the people who love you most right you become a liability to them if you can't take care of yourself physically or emotionally or economically or socially right because you can't say it's not your problem it is the problem of people who love you because they care about you right and you don't live on your own you live with a context of family or friends or and there must be somebody who is linked to you in some way or form because you're all interdependent so your first responsibility is to take care of yourself and carry your own burden right make sure that you're not a liability or an extra burden to other people because everybody is busy carrying their own you know burden carrying their own baggage fighting their own challenges so the, and i find that as a basic you know the most basic duty the most basic moral obligation is just to take care of yourself you no know? that's number one number two no, 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 number two is you want to go a step further and now we're going into the context or the universe of leadership is help other people take care of themselves you know help them really reduce some of their burden reduce some of their pain reduce some of their uh, suffering um, create opportunities for happiness create happy moments for them and for you make life more bearable for them you know if something hits your family then at least try not to collapse right and then if somebody else is collapsing maybe you can support them and maybe if you want to take it further maybe you maybe you could be the you know the strongest person in the family the pillar where you know inspires everybody to be strong to summon their you know their intrinsic uh, strengths and resilience and pull themselves together so maybe you can play that role if you want to expand you know the horizon of your impact and if you want to take it further maybe you can do that to your larger family maybe you can to do that to your you know colleagues and 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 community and if you are in a place in history where you are influencing or you can impact you know millions of people or even the international community maybe you would keep that in mind and help them you know make meaning of what's happening make life more bearable for them right and 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 inspire them or mobilize them or do whatever it takes right so that their journey of survival and growth becomes more productive or at least uh, less less painful and, uh, and and if you can't do that at least please don't create more mess you know if no problem if you can't do that no problem if you say you know what i can't take all this responsibility right i can barely carry my own weight no problem uh, i mean beautiful blessings to you at least because you're not being a liability to other but at least don't make it worse so i think if we keep that perspective of how do you you know stay standing on your feet during these different difficult times how do you um, keep inspiring yourself keep you know keep um, fighting your own battles so that you can continue to see hope when everything around you is dark um, then you know well done then if you can do that for others then then even better I, and, and I'm hopeful because I believe in our internal strengths. I believe in what we can do. And history is full of examples of people who tolerated horrible stuff. I mean, look at you know genocide. Look at uh, look at look at uh, look at uh, the, uh, you know the global wars. Look at uh, the, the massacres that happened in history. Look at famines. Look at plagues. Look at I mean, and and here we are, 21st century. And and we're doing fine. Um, we we have we're messing up life at so many levels, but we're doing great things also at so many levels. You know, we've solved problems of hunger. We're solving that. Medicine is getting better. Um, um, so many aspects, you know, that deserve the celebration. Of course, we continue to learn, but that's part of. I mean, that's there's a name for that. It's called life, right? 
so 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 that that's that's how that's how I put all this in perspective and uh, and as I said I start from myself and then if I can you know become a candle or light uh, for to other people then even better and uh, you know these these lights where you can control the intensity of the light you can dim it and you can turn it into a projector so it's it's the same analogy uh, you can at, you, if you can't maybe it's a dim light but at least you're you, you have light around you so that you can you don't fall but if you have strength then go ahead man become you know become a floodlight be exactly a projector become a floodlight become the sun if you can because people so share our lives exactly because people need that people need that and and you're going to need it at some stage and if not you your kids or your partner or people around you so and i see no alternative to that because the other alternative is just you know things becoming worse and there's no bottom to how things can become worse there's no bottom to that yeah and you know i was going to ask you a final question but i think you've answered it i was going to ask you you know for those how would you speak to those who for example, or on the front line as a healthcare provider, and time and time again, they're seeing they're seeing people coding, um, they're telling loved ones that their you know family member has died, and then they get up, they do their job, and it happens again and again and again. Or <coughs> excuse me, or you know the, the family where COVID nineteen disease is clustering and they're losing multiple people so quickly. How do you speak to those people? Right. I think what you've said. I love the example of of light because if if you're still resilient and can still project and still carry others, then it's okay. But if you feel dim or depleted, you know, in a psychiatric sense, energetically, then find light, and that will help you rise and help you get through this time. Yes, yes. I mean, this. The question that yes. I was ask you. No, no, it's beautiful. No, we're we're having, we're having conversation, so it's beautiful. So, and 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 I, I'm not surprised to see these people. I'm not surprised. I tell you why, because. Yeah. Um, in my in my professional life, I, you know, I started my career as a war journalist, and I covered wars. So I I have seen firsthand. I mean, serious wars, not uh, screen wars. I mean, serious serious war, wars. And I have lost friends, and I've seen people lost lose friends um, firsthand, right? Uh, I mean, in one month, three of my colleagues died while right, they're doing their job, and that's. Uh, it's not an uncommon story when you're in that line of business. Of course, soldiers get this all the time. So, so what I'm saying is, I'm not surprised to see the doctors and the nurses and all the people who are, you know, helping others to get through this by using their skills and experience and you know whatever they can offer. Because this is, this is, this is, this is part of the beauty of what being a human is all about you know we do ugly stuff and sometimes we're ruthless and we do some horrible things to each other but at the same time we can be so loving that we can sacrifice our own well-being for the sake of others and this is a beautiful manifestation of what being a human is all about and so i'm not surprised now the other thing is uh, it's also a wonderful example of inspiration so when people see that you know the way people react to the doctors and almost everywhere at least in many many countries you know people expressed uh, gestures of gratitude by clapping hands and doing all kinds of gestures to say thank you and so and so, so when you see this you say you know my god it's beautiful to be a human being when you see these these moments so 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 this is um, you know part of human nature and uh, and uh, it says a lot about the resilience and the strength of these people and it says a lot about the potential for resilience and strength we have ourselves especially in our weak moments because we've seen our you know brothers and sisters and friends and uh, and other people who can go through even harder times right by not only supporting themselves by every single day you know supporting people every single day every single day um, and uh, uh, it's it's a reflection of who we can be in this in these moments and what i say to these people what i say to these people i mean you're heroes and uh, there will be times there will be times that you're in trouble and you can't be a hero so what i say to you all of you all these people who did all these great efforts is um, don't be shy to ask for help yourselves 
because you've done your share and there will be times in your life where you will need help the same way that you offered others help so don't be shy don't feel guilty not for a second you have more than earned it right even before doing what you've done but now even more to ask for your share of for help to ask for your share of peace and tranquility to ask for your share to have your own space to ask for your share to do whatever it takes to rebuild this energy you know to come back to you know fill up your heart again with all the emotions and all the love and all the you know the energy that you need to go back and restore your own life right in the most sort of normal way because what you've done is history is 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 huge and is deep and I'm sure it has been draining so so maybe after you've done what you've done to other people it's time that you take care of yourself the way you took care of other people yeah to restore your to restore your sanity and by doing that uh, you would also be providing us with a lesson right about the right way of doing things right so, you know the, the 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 importance of asking for help when you need help the importance of taking care of yourself um, um, all the time, the importance of appreciating yourself and tapping yourself on the shoulder when you've done something that you're proud of, or even though, I mean, regardless of the result, at least when you've done your best. So, so, so there's so much to be said for them, and for the people who are uh, people who have been, who have suffered. Um, I mean, what can you say? Words are not enough um, and um, we, we talk I mean we talk about that the default the nature of reality is suffering you know this is not it's naive to call life a journey of happiness maybe the purpose is to increase as many happy moments as you can to create happy moments for you and others but to say that you know this is we're not in heaven this is a journey of survival right and and it's not an easy thing to do in this complex life so so it's your share now um hold on to hope um you know after every winter there's always spring never doubt the resilience that you can have and uh, some wounds will be healing maybe with time some wounds, some wounds will never heal right some wounds will never heal but that's your share and other people have their own share and if it's not now they will get their share later on so we have no choice but to be you know to accept the nature of being human and to carry our wounds with grace and with compassion and and to capture every possible opportunity of making the best of this life and you know every happy moment to capture it not lead not leave one happy moment you know fleet right and creates more ha create more happy moments because you know that's what life is um, there is a famous uh, Lebanese philosopher is called his name is Gibran Khalil Gibran you know yeah he, he wrote the famous book called the prophet he says life is a smile and a tear right is a smile and a tear so it's your turn now for the tear but but hold on you know te the tears will dry the mark will still be there maybe but it will dry and there will be days uh, there will be days of plenty of smiles and uh, maybe that's what being human is all about yeah and i think for those who you know are very affected by grief and loss during this time it's also important to find ways to laugh and smile it's okay to do that i think a lot of people feel that I've spoken to feel guilt, right? To feel happy, but that's also part of this time, right? To find the happy moments with the sadness. You know, it's always a juxtaposition, I think. So I, I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, and that's when, when, when people feel guilty that they're happy, it's actually a positive thing in the sense that it's a, even, it's a further expression of, you know, how beautiful they are from inside, you know, because it's a sign of empathy, that I'm so empathetic that I want to connect with you in your grief and I don't accept it to myself that while you're in pain, you know, how can I be happy? So, so it shows the depth for goodness that exists in that person. Of course, it doesn't mean that they should do that. Um, they should capture this moment because it's a gift, right? Um, 
but but it shows that there's so much space for happiness and and love in their heart and uh, uh, sooner or later they should make use of that and not feel guilty at all because um, because it's their time I mean let them use it before the second wave comes you know because it's all waves right yes, yes. what storm and then it's calm then it's another storm and then it's calm and then there's a tsunami and then it's calm so when it's calm go and swim when it's a tsunami hide i mean you whatever so and that and that that's how life is yeah uh, michael it is so lovely to speak with you and hear your wisdom and your strength and resilience um, through this i think it will help a lot of people um it's a pleasure to meet you this way thank you i hope to meet you in person one day when we're physically undistanced Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my regards to your audience. I, it's beautiful what you're doing. And I can, I can see um, compassion and, and love going I mean, through your words. And uh, I wish you all success. And anything I can do for you um, um, was a pleasure.